Okay, guys, welcome. Uh, this is business math and this is exponent notes. Okay, so we are just going to go over the rules of exponents again. I believe you learned those in 0410. Uh, if so, this is a refresher. If not, if you haven't seen exponent rules at all, well, you're going to learn something new today. Marvelous, right? Okay. All right. So we have our exponent rules. So at the top, if a factor is being multiplied by itself several times, we use exponential notation. notation. Let b and n be any real numbers, then b to the n, where b is the base and n is the exponent, is equivalent to b times b times b times b times b, times b all the way till you get to that nth power. So you expand it to whatever that number of n is, whatever that power of n is. Just like down below, for the first one, 4 cubed means 4 times 4 times 4. That means it went, you expanded it 3 times, right? 4 times 4 times 4. Okay, 2 to the fifth, same thing. 2 to the fifth means... 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So you expand it five times. Okay. And then, same thing, A, B, C to the third means A, B, C times A, B, C times A, B, C three times. Okay. So we do that three times. All right. So that is just expanding your exponential notation. You expand it to whatever your degree, whatever your exponent says, okay? All right. All right, get into some properties down below. Property one says anything raised to the first power, anything raised to the first power is itself. So any base, raised to the power of one, raised to the exponent of one, raised to the degree of one, is still the same base, as you see down below. Four to the one is still four. Negative three to the first is still negative three. N times T to the first is just N times T. That's it. So anything to the first power is itself. Property two. This one's important, everybody forgets it. Any base raised to the zero with power is always one. No matter what the base is, it's always going to be one. A lot of people make this mistake and say, well, b to the zero with has to be zero. No, that's when I yell at you and I say, get out of my classroom, okay? So. Anything to the zeroth power is always one, as in the examples below. Four to the zeroth is one. Negative three to the zeroth is one. Six times x times y to the zeroth is one. Anything raised to the zeroth is one. All right, property three. This is also important that students forget. Anything raised to a negative exponent can be changed into a fraction, okay? So you can make b to the negative n, we can skip the middle part if it doesn't make sense, and just go straight to here. Anything raised to a negative exponent can always be turned into a fraction, or like my math students like to say, you just flip it to the denominator. And when you flip it to the denominator, the negative exponent becomes positive, okay? All right, so that is the negative exponent rule, okay? And the b can equal zero part is, of course, your denominator can never ever be zero. So we just have to put that statement there, okay? Excellent, so here's your examples down below. 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half. Negative 5 to the negative 6 is 1 over negative 5 to the positive 6. And PR to the negative 3 is the same as 1 over PR to the third. That's it. That's how you use the negative exponent rule. 
All right. Of course, we're only showing the rules. If we need to do further simplification, we will, but that's what these notes are for. Let's get used to the rules first. Okay, and look on your right side. Here are just examples of calculating a base to an exponent. Two cubed is eight, two squared is four, two to the first is two, two to the zeroth power is one. Two to the negative one, one half, two to the negative two, one fourth. And we can keep going. So this is just an example of how you can calculate um, exponential notations. Okay, or exponential expressions with notations. Okay, cool. All right, let's practice. Number one, five to the first. Well, anything to the first power is the same base. So five to the first is still five. Two. Any base raised to the zeroth power is one. So four times x raised to the zeroth is one. Three. Six times x times y raised to the negative one. Any base raised to a negative exponent can be turned into a fraction. So this just becomes one over six times x times y. I could put this as parentheses one, but anything raised to the first power is itself. So that means I can just leave it like that. That's it. Four, excellent. Solve this expression. 5 times t to the zeroth minus 4 times t to the 2 to the negative 1 plus 2 cubed. So remember, we still have to think of orders of operations, which I told you was a lie. We've been lied to our whole lives. But the only things that stay true were parentheses and exponents, right? So we remember PEMDAS, right? So we have parentheses first and then exponents second. So... Let's look at these parentheses and let's look at these exponents first. That's where we're going to move first. All right. So let's do it. So for the very first one, five times t to the zeroth. Well, anything to the zeroth power is one. So this becomes one minus four times two to the negative one. Now, that's another exponential. So we have to handle the exponent. Two to the negative one, anything raised to a negative power becomes a fraction. So two to the negative one becomes one half. Plus, again, two cubed goes under exponents. Two cubed is two times two times two, which should give me eight. Okay. Next, in our PEMDAS, we have multiplication and division. Remember, it's whatever comes first. If division came first, we would do division first, then multiplication. That's why we said PEMDAS was a lie. Okay, so one minus four times one half plus eight. The only thing I see here next is multiplication, okay? Multiplication. So that's what we'll do. I'll have one minus, and then four times one half is two plus eight. Okay, and then next, usually PEMDAS was addition and then subtraction. Well, again, it matters which one comes first. If subtraction comes first, we'll do subtraction, and then we'll do addition. It all, whatever, it all depends on what comes first. So here, we see that subtraction comes first. So we're gonna do that first. One minus two, negative one plus eight. And then we finish it off as negative one plus eight is a positive seven. All right, so there's your PEMDAS. That's how it works, right? That's our order. Sorry guys that you were lied to your whole lives. 
Okay. Do I need PEMDAS on this side? No, all of those are easy. Okay, I can get rid of this. Okay, we start back. One to the six power. One to the six power. Well, one to the six means one times one times one times one times one times one, and one times one infinitely many times, it's still one. Minus negative one to the zeroth. Anything to the zeroth power is still one. And here you get one minus one, which is going to be zero. Okay, negative two to the fourth. All right, I'm gonna show you how to expand this. Negative two to the fourth. So parentheses mean everything. Parentheses can determine the base of your exponential function. And no parentheses, we have to figure out what the base is. So let's look at number six, and then we'll look at number seven. For number six, I work these together. Why not? I can definitely work these together. Okay. For number six, since there are no parentheses, two is the base. For number seven, since there are parentheses, negative two is the base. So let's go ahead and go ahead and expand these and let's see the difference. So when I expand this, I first start with the negative out front. And then I expand the two four times because it's two to the fourth. So I have two times two times two times two, which is four times two, which is eight, which is that, which is 16, negative 16. Yeah. But now number seven, let's expand. Since my base is enclosed in parentheses, I now have to write negative two times negative two times negative two times negative two. I expand it four times because that's what the exponent is. Okay, well, negative and negative make positive. Negative and negative make positive. Positive times positive is positive, right? So this whole thing becomes positive. So negative two times negative two, positive four. Four times negative two, negative eight. Negative eight times negative two, positive 16. So this is when I tell you parentheses are important. You get two different answers, okay? Who runs the world? Not Beyonce, it's parentheses. Parentheses run the world, okay? All right. So number nine, same example. Negative two to the third, no parentheses. Two is my base. Number nine, parentheses. Negative two is my base. Expand, bring the negative out front, and write two three times. Two times two times two. Down below, write negative two three times. All right. So negative two times two times two, two times two is four, four times two is eight, you get negative eight. Here you get negative two times negative two, right? Negative two times negative two gives you a positive four but then four times that negative two is negative eight. Okay, well, here we get the same answer, but what you must notice is that, look at the degrees, look at the exponents, right? So we can say that any even number, right? Any 
I'm not going to say not any even number, any negative number, right? Any negative number within parentheses raised to a even exponent will always come out positive. Okay. Which means that, look below, any negative number raised to an odd exponent will still come out negative. So a negative raised to an even becomes positive. A negative raised to an odd remains negative. There you go. Okay, cool. All right, so there's three properties so far. Remember those. Now we go to more properties, right? We get to more rules. There's so many rules. Okay, so, but all these rules are important for exponential operations, okay? All right, so first one is called product rule. Product rule is if you have the same base, if I have x to the m times x to the n, then since I have the same base, I can combine it as one term and make it x to the m plus n. So what we say there is that when you multiply terms with the same base, you will add the exponents. Add the exponents. Okay, which means look below at your examples. B times B times B. This is B to the first, B to the first, B to the first, B to the first. And that becomes, since they're all the same base, you add the exponents. B times B times B means B to the one plus one plus one plus one or B to the fourth. Okay, and then for the next one, x cubed times x to the fifth, again, same base, add your exponents. You get x to the eighth. x cubed times x to the fifth, x to the eighth, okay? All right, same thing down below. a times b to the seventh, times a times b, a times b times c to the 18th, same base, add your exponents. 7 plus 18, a times b times c to the 25th. And then, last one, a times fifth times a to the negative 2. Same base, you still add your exponents. It becomes a to the fifth plus negative 2, or a to the 5 minus 2, which gives me a cubed. All right. That is your product rule. Let me see, is it, oh, practice on all of them. Okay, next is quotient rule. Well, quotient rule says, all right, same base. If you have the same base over one another, you will subtract your exponents. So x to the m over x to the n is the same thing as x to the m minus n. And let's look at it down below. 2 to the 6 over 2 squared, same base, subtract your exponents. You get 2 to the 6 minus 2, which gives me 2 to the 4. You subtract them. Okay. Next one. x cubed over x to the fifth, same base. You get x to the 3 minus 5, which gives me x to the negative 2. And remember, we learned a negative exponent property, which allows me to rewrite it as one over x squared. Everything comes together here. We're putting all these rules together. All the exponential rules work together. We can use them together. Okay. All right. Next one, s times c to the eighth over s times c to the two, same base. Subtract your exponents, s times c to the eight minus two, gives me s times c to the 6. That's quotient rule. 
So you have a quotient rule and a product rule for exponents. Okay, now let's practice those. How much practice we got? This whole page, perfect. Okay, and I'll show you another way to do it as well. Exponents are crazy and you can handle them as you like, okay? So for this first one, four to the fifth over four to the fourth, same base, which means you will subtract your exponents. This becomes four to the five minus four, which gives me four to the first. And four to the first is just four. There you go. Okay, like I said, I'll give you another way to work this. So, and it's the fun way. Four to the fifth, let's relook at the problem. Four to the fifth means how many fours do I have? I have five fours, right? So that means in the numerator, I can expand it to four times four times four times four times four. There's five fours, right? In the denominator, four to the fourth means I have four fours. I can write that as four times four times four times four. Now get the biggest marker, pencil, pen you have and just have fun canceling. These four cancel. These fours cancel. These fours cancel. Those fours cancel. And you're left with a single four. Fun, right? You gotta have fun with it. Why not? That's another way to handle these. Crazy, right? Exponents can get crazy. Eleven. Two to the six times two to the negative four. Same base. You will add your exponents. This becomes two to the six plus negative four. Or two to the six minus four, which will be two squared which happens to be four, not that. Okay. Okay, that's one way of handling it. Option two. Two to the negative fourth can be rewritten as one over two to the fourth, right? one over two to the fourth. So let's do that. Here's option two. I can make this two to the six over two to the fourth. Now we can use quotient rule and I can have two to the six minus four, which will give me two squared, which is still Four. There you go. Now I could show a method three, and that method, that third method would be this whole crossing out fun time thing, where you get the point. You put or there you go. All right, 12, x times y to the fifth times x times y to the ninth. Same base, add your exponents by product rule. x to the y, x times y to the five plus nine gives me x times y to the 14th. There you go. All right, 13. Method one, 
quotient rule, same base, subtract your exponents. 6 to the second minus 0 gives me 6 squared, which is 36. Or you have 6 squared over 6 to the 0 with, which gives me 6 squared over anything to the 0 with power is 1. That is correct. 1. This becomes 36 over 1, which is still 36. Okay. So, there you go. All right. So, now we have x times 4x to the 10th times 3x to the 5th. Notice how the exponents are inside the parentheses now. They're inside the parentheses. Okay which means that, yes, we can distribute these terms together. I can say this x, this x times this 4x to 10 times 3x to the fifth. So the way I want to handle this first is let's multiply the numbers first. Let's multiply the numbers first. So if I do this, I should get this 4 times this 3, which gives me 12. Okay? So we do that. And then after that, I want to multiply my variables. So I'm going to rewrite what's left. 12 times x times x to the 10th times x to the 5th. OK. Now, same base, same base, same base. Add all your exponents. And remember. The exponent on this little single x here is 1. So we should get 12 times x to the 1 plus 10 plus 5. So x, 12x to the 16th. That's it. Okay. 15. Ooh, fun. All right. So, 15, x to the 12th times y cubed over x to the fifth times y to the ninth. So we want to quotient rule this one. So we're going to work this one step by step. The first piece I want to pull out is this one. x to the 12th times x to the fifth. Now, since we're using quotient rule, since it's the same base over each other, it becomes subtraction. So I would have x to the 12th minus 5 times. The next piece I want to take out is this y cubed over y to the 9th. y cubed over y to the 9th. So when I take that piece out, again, it's quotient rule. y cubed minus 9. Simplify, you get x to the 7th times y to the negative 6. Okay. Now, we want to rewrite this using the new, the new rules we have learned today. And when I say the new rules, I just want to rewrite y to the negative 6. Remember, anything to a negative exponent can be rewritten as a fraction. So that's what we're going to do here. This will become x to the 7th over y to the 6th. There it is. That's it. OK, perfect. All right, so that was product and quotient rule. All right, now we learn more rules. Product to power and quotient to power. I'm gonna take a small break. Okay, cool. All right, new rules. Um, here's product to a power rule. 
So if it's x times y to the m, then x and y will both be raised to the m power. Now, what students like to say is that, oh, you distributed the exponent. That is incorrect. We never distribute exponents. We raise each base separately to that power of m, whatever that power is. So we do not distribute exponents. But if it makes your life easier thinking, thinking that way, then sure, maybe you distributed the exponent. But I don't approve. Okay. So examples, 2 times x to the fourth means 2 to the fourth times x to the fourth. So you raise each base separately to the fourth power. And then 2 to the fourth becomes 16. x to the fourth stays x to the fourth. All right. Then down below, 5xy squared times xy to the fourth. So for the first one, that one says 5 to the second, x to the second, y to the second. For the next one, that's x to the fourth and y to the fourth. And now all we do is clean up. 5 squared becomes 25. x squared times x to the fourth becomes x to the sixth. y squared times y to the fourth becomes y to the sixth. So again, we're using all the exponential rules we are learning. Since the x's had the same base, you add the exponents. Since the y's had the same base, you add the exponents. Hence the final answer of 25 x to the six, y to the six. So that's called product to power. Okay, next is quotient to power. If you have x time x over y to the m, then it just simply becomes x to the m over y to the m. Okay, so again, you're raising each base separately to that power of m. Okay, so this means I get 2 over x to the fourth, which means 2 to the fourth over x to the fourth. 2 to the fourth is 16, x to the fourth is x to the fourth. And that's what our answer states. Five times x, y to the second over x times y to the fourth. So for the first one, five x, y to the second means five squared, x squared, y squared, all raised to the second. Down below, x, y to the fourth, x to the fourth, y to the fourth. And then, they start to simplify. Five squared is, of course, 25. Here, x squared over x to the fourth would use quotient rule. You would subtract your exponents and get x squared in the denominator. Same thing here. y squared over y to the fourth uses quotient rule. You subtract your exponents and you get y squared. Like I said, we are now combining all these rules we're learning. And I think we've learned six, maybe, I think six rules so far. Okay. So let's put those to practice down below. All right. So 16. A times B times C to the fourth means we're going to raise each term inside separately to the fourth power. Fourth power. That becomes a to the fourth times b to the fourth times c to the fourth. That's it. 17, four over five cubed. This becomes four cubed over five cubed. Four cubed over five cubed. Good on silo. And simplify that. Four cubed is 64. Five cubed is 125. How do I know what those cubed are? Well, type them in a calculator. Okay. 
18. 6 times x squared. You're going to raise 6 to the second power, and you're going to raise x to the second power separately. This becomes 36x squared. Nineteen. D to the fifth over two to the fifth. You are going to use you're going to raise D to the fifth separately. Two to the fifth separately. This becomes D to the fifth over two to the fifth, which should be 32. Yes, 32. Yeah, that's using the rules above. And now more rules. My goodness. Okay. Power to a power rule. Okay. So now, this says if I have x to the m raised to the nth, then power to a power rule means that we are going to multiply the exponents together. x to the m raised to the nth becomes x times m, x to the m times n. Okay, so power to a power, multiply your exponents. Examples down below, okay? X cubed raised to the fourth. X cubed raised to the fourth. Power to a power, you get three times four. Uh, what's the easiest one? So this, the first one's showing you the long way. This means that you can expand it four times as X cubed times X cubed times X cubed times X cubed. And with the same base, you would add your exponents x to the 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3, which would give you x to the 12th. Okay, but then using our new shortcut rule, power to power, which is down here, x cubed raised to the fourth, we say x to the 3 times 4, which is x to the 12th, which is so much faster than the one above it. Okay. But again, it showed you different methods because you see exponents are crazy and no matter what you do what rule you use you're gonna get to the same answer okay all right next one x squared times y to the fifth to the third this means you're gonna take x squared and raise it to the third separately which is right here x to the two times three this means you're gonna take y to the fifth and raise it to the third power separately, which is right here, y to the five times three. Simplify, you get x to the six times y to the 15th. That's it, that's power to a power. Okay, sign change rule, all right. Here you have x to the negative m over y to the negative n. And remember, for your negative exponent rules, x to the negative n equals 1 over x to the n, right? So essentially, what's going to happen here on this sign change rule is x to the negative m is going to, what you like to say, flip to the denominator. So x to the negative m becomes x to the n. And then y to the negative n will flip to the numerator, becoming y to the n. So basically, x to the negative m over y to the negative m, they flip over each other, and the exponents become positive. I don't know if there's an easier way to explain that one. Okay, so example one x to the negative fourth over three to the negative two, you will flip them over each other and x to the fourth 
becomes x to the positive 4. 3 to the negative 2 becomes 3 squared. Simplify. 3 squared is 9. x to the 4th is x to the 4th. That's it. Okay. Now, negative 2 to the negative 3 over 5 to the negative 2. You will flip them over each other. You get 5 squared over negative 2 to the positive 3, right? Flip and flip. And then 5 squared is 25. Negative 2 cubed is negative 8. And that just becomes negative 25 over 8. Okay. That's how the sign change rule works. So let's see what practice we have. Okay. 20. 3 times x to the fourth raised to the second. So this is power to power and also product to power. So we are going to make this 3 to the second times x to the fourth times 2. We raise them separately to the second power, okay? Which means that I'm going to get 9 times x to the eighth. That's it. 21. 5 times x to the negative 8 to the third. Just like the one before it, raise them separately to the third power. 5 to the third times x to the negative 8 times 3. This becomes 5 cubed, which is 125 times x to the negative 24. One more rewrite because we want to use all our rules. x to the negative 24 will flip down. So this becomes 125 over x to the 24th. 125 over x to the 24th. 22. 22. x to the negative 4 over 7 to the negative 2. We're going to use our sign change rule, and x to the negative fourth will flip to the denominator. 7 to the negative 2 will flip to the numerator. So this becomes 7 squared over x to the fourth. So they flip over each other, and now simplify. We get 49 over x to the fourth. There's that. Okay. 23. A times B to the negative 3 over B to the negative 1. Again, sign change rule. Flip them over each other where their exponents become positive. You get B to the positive 1 over... A times B cubed. Okay. We're not done because we can simplify more. All right. Uh-oh. Let me see. Did my computer break? Let's see. Yes. One moment, please. My Zoom just went out on my laptop. Okay. We're back. My laptop acts funny with the Wi-Fi. So sometimes it disconnects I don't know stuff I have to deal with okay so we flip them over each other becomes b to the positive one over a times b to the three now we must simplify more because in the denominator you can raise a to the third and b to the third so that's where we're going next b over a cubed b cubed 
And then we see there's a chance to simplify with this B over B cubed. So I'll just write this separately. Remember, now it's quotient rule. So you have the same base, you will subtract the exponents. So that becomes B to the first minus three, which becomes B to the negative two, which also means that this can become one over B squared. So now we come back to this problem and we finish it. You get one over a cubed b squared. That's it. Okay. All right. All those rules, guys. All right. Which means more rules. Okay. So here we get into the definition of rational exponents. And what's the best way I can make this make sense? Let me see. Where are these rules at? Um, n to the x over n. Okay. So basically, to sum this property up, because everything probably looks confusing, right? This property can become these two properties. So that's what I'm going to write out to the side. So if you're ever given a rational exponent of b to the m over n, then one way to rewrite it is as the nth root of b to the m. And then one more way to write this is as parentheses, the nth root of b, all raised to the m power. That's it. These are the three properties. And that probably looks a little better than what's over there. It's exact same thing that's over there, but they do this to show you how they simplify and everything. So I'll get there in a second. You can ignore that part for now. Just know that this is another property. B to the M over N is the same as the nth root of B to the M, which is the same as the nth root of B all raised to the N power. Okay. And then down below, they just show a negative exponent property. So here another one could be b to the negative m over n. Well, we know anything that has a negative exponent will flip and become 1 over b to the m over n. So there's another property. OK. All right. There you go. Okay. And then more properties of radicals, not so much exponents, but radicals. Uh, the first one says that if you have the nth root of x to the n, so if this index is the same as this power, then they should cancel and just leave you with x. That's all that is saying. So to make sense of that, look at this example here. Here you have the cube root of x cubed. This index is the same as this power. So they essentially cancel and leave you with x. That's it. So if I were to draw another example, if I said the fourth root of x to the fourth, this power and that power are the same, which means they would cancel and leave me with x. So that's another example. Two, 
the nth root of x, y. Here are properties for radicals. The nth root of x times y can be split into the nth root of x times the nth root of y. So you are allowed to split radicals apart. So for their example, they give the fifth root of x, y can be split into the fifth root of x times the fifth root of y. So it's saying we are allowed to split radicals up by multiplication. Okay, another example. Let's say I just had the square root of x, y. I can make this square root x times square root y. That's it. That's all it's saying. And three says the nth root of x over y. You can split up radicals by division, by a quotient. So the nth root of x over y is the same as the nth root of x over the nth root of y. Okay. So their example, the fourth root of x over y is the same as the fourth root of x over the fourth root of y. They are just separating them. That's it. They're showing you how these radical properties work. Okay. And then, I'm still recording, right? Okay, good. All right, so if I made an example, again, what if I just said the square root of x over the square root of y? I can make this square root x over square root y. That's it. That's all it's saying. Okay. So this says, simplify each expression and write answers using positive exponents only. All variables represent positive real numbers. Okay. Simplify and write answers using positive exponents only. All right. So let's start with the first one. Using all the exponential properties we know, x to the 1 fourth times x to the 7 fourth. Same base, you will add your exponents. This becomes x to the 1 fourth plus 7 fourths. Ooh, fractions. It's okay. You guys know how to work fractions. You have a calculator, don't you? Well, this one you don't really need a calculator for. 1 fourth plus 7 fourth gives me 8 fourths. Or 8 fourths is just 2. And boy, no. No. Okay, that's it. All right, two. Why did it three fourths over y to the nine fourths? Same base over each other. You subtract the exponents. So what we'll have here is y to the three fourths minus nine fourths. Y to the three fourths minus nine fourths. Well. 3 fourths minus 9 fourths gives me y to the negative 6 fourths. Reduce that, you get y to the negative 3 halves. y to the negative 3 halves. Well, it said to write everything as a positive exponent. So we know since it's negative, it can flip. So this becomes 1 over y to the three halves. There you go. Okay, three. Now again, we're using all the properties we know. So nine times x to the six times y to the negative two all raised to the one half. This means that we are gonna raise each one of these to the one half power. So that's nine to the one half times x to the six times one half. Remember, power to a power is 
multiplication. Power to a power is multiplication, okay? And same thing here. Y to the negative two raised to the one half becomes Y to the negative two times one half. Okay, well, I get nine to the one half times x to the third times y to the negative one. Okay. Simplify some more. Okay. You get, well, when I say simplify more, we can actually simplify nine to the one half and we can do something with y to the negative one. Since y is the only one raised to the negative exponent, we can flip it to the denominator. So that's where we're going to go next. We get nine, nine to the one half x cubed over y. Okay, now nine to the one half, let's look at this. We are going to use one of our new rational exponent properties. 9 to the 1 half, which is going to be this property right there. So 9 to the 1 half. You see that 9 to the 1 half, if this 2 is represented by this n, then this n becomes the index of the radical, okay? That becomes the index of the radical. So this means 9 to the 1 half becomes the square root of 9 to the first power. See how that works? So here's 1. That's my m. There's my m, right? Here's 2. There's my n. There's my index. And then my base 9, right there base of nine. So that's where it all comes from. And we know that we don't have to put the two there in the square root. I'm just showing you how the property works. So this just becomes the square root of nine, which happens to be three. So I'll write that down below. So 9 to the 1 half becomes the square root of 9, which is just 3. So our answer here is 3x cubed over y. All right, still going. Okay, four. X to the two thirds times X to the negative three fifths. Same base, add your exponents. We get X to the two thirds plus negative three-fifths, which becomes x to the two-thirds minus three-fifths. Now we need to put these fractions together, so we need a common denominator. And what is the common denominator between three and five? If you said 15, that is correct. Okay which means I need to multiply this fraction by three over three, and I need to multiply this fraction by five over five, right? Which means we get x to the 10 over 15 
minus 9 over 15. Okay. Simplify one more time, and I think we have it. X to the 1 over 15. There it is. Lovely, lovely fractions, right? Okay, five. Nine raised to the two-thirds raised to the six. Remember, power to a power, the operation is multiplication, right? So when I rewrite this, we should have nine raised to the two-thirds times six. Nine raised to the two-thirds times six. Now what this looks like is two-thirds times six over one. All right, you could multiply straight across and get 12 over three, which gives us four. Or you could cross cancel. That three becomes a one, that six becomes a two, and two times two still gives us four. Either way you wanna go about it. Okay, so now we come down here and we get, oops, nine to the fourth. That's good, unless you really wanna know what nine to the fourth is. I think it's pretty huge. 6,561. So that or that, either one. Okay, six. X to the fourth times Y to the negative fourth, all raised to the five halves. So this is product to power, also using power to power. So we're gonna raise everything to the five halves which means we're gonna multiply our exponents by five halves. So this becomes x to the fourth times five halves times y to the negative fourth times five halves. Okay. So clean them up. <clears throat> we should get the first one x to the 20 over two, or that's just x to the 10th, times y to the negative 20 over two, or y to the negative 10, right? For these guys, again, that's four over one times five halves, which gives me 20 over two, which gives me 10. Or again, you can cross cancel and still get 10. The same thing would work for negative four times five halves. You just have to make it negative. Okay, now we get x to the 10th over y to the 10th. All right, <clears throat> so this one says, change each expression to radical form, do not simplify. Okay, so this means we'll be using this property. The x to the m over n, it wants us to put it in radical form, so we're gonna rewrite it as the nth root of x to the m. <clears throat> That's the property we're using for this one. And of course, any other properties we've learned along the way. Okay. So seven times y to the two fifths. Okay. So what we must realize here is that the only, the only term being raised to an exponent is the variable y. 
y to the two-fifths is the only one being raised to the exponent. This is why I say parentheses are important, okay? Because this means that I can just rewrite this as 7 times the fifth root of y squared. That's it. 7 times the fifth root of y squared. That's all. Maybe I should write that bigger. Seven times the fifth root of y squared. That's it. Okay. Next one. All right. So here, this is in parentheses, but still. The parentheses are there to throw us off because the only term still being raised to an exponent is just the variable, just that x to the 3 halves. So before I write this, I'll just take it out of the parentheses. I can just rewrite this as 8x to the 3 halves. And the only part we have to change to a radical is that x to the 3 halves using the same formula that I wrote over here, x to the m over n. So this becomes 8 times the square root, I'll put a 2 in there just to show how the property works, of x cubed. And now to clean up my answer, since it's a square root, we don't need that 2 in there, I get 8 times the square root of x cubed. There it is. Now, here is where it matters. Now, this one's different because it's 8x to the 3 halves. Now, 8x is inside the parentheses. This means that both terms are being raised to the 3 halves. So, all we have to do is, well, just convert this to radical. Here, I will get, again, the square root of parentheses 8x cubed. That's it. That's all. Remember, the denominator of your rational exponent becomes the index of your radical. The numerator of your rational exponent becomes the power of the term inside. That's why this 2 is over here. That becomes the index of the radical, the power of the radical, and this 3 becomes the power of the term inside. That's how this works. And again, I will rewrite it one more time because since it's a square root, we don't need that two there. And this becomes a square root of eight X cubed. Ten. x to the negative 7 over 2. Well, remember, this has a negative exponent, so the first thing we're going to do is flip it down. 1 over x to the 7 halves. Now, we will rewrite as a radical using the properties. So I get 1 over and look at your denominator of that exponent. That is a 2. So again, we'll get the square root of x to the 7th. That is it. That is all. Okay. That one said don't simplify. And now this one says, change each of the following radical expressions to expressions involving fractional exponents. Okay, so we're still not simplifying. 
So now we are using the, this property again, but the other way around. So now we're given the nth root of x to the m, and now we want to rewrite it as x to the m over n. That's all we're doing with these ones. So they're giving it to us in radical form. We want to put it back into rational exponent form. Okay. So number 11, this becomes x raised and the numerator of your exponent is going to be the power inside x to the 2 over the denominator is going to be the power of your radical the index of your radical so we get x over 2 thirds that's it kids that's all What could I say? What could I say? I could say numerator and I could say denominator. There you go. 12, same thing. This becomes x to the 3 over five. That's it. 13. All right. This one throwing us a curveball. We have to rewrite it. So we have to change this radical into an exponent. So this means this becomes one over, and I will get x to the one-third, x to the one-third. Now, we are going to use the negative exponent trick. So now we're gonna do this. We have one over x to the n, and now we're gonna work it backwards and make this x to the negative n. So this means that my answer here is just going to be x to the negative one-third. That's all. 14. The square root of x to the ninth. Okay, so for your reference, sure, since it's a square root, put the two in there. So we'll make this square root x to the ninth, which means when you convert, x to the 9 over 2. That's it. That's how you work those. Okay. So that's going from radical to rational. Above was going from rational to radical. All right, last set. Simplify, yay. Determine the rational number representations for each. So here we're gonna use those properties again. We're gonna go from rational exponent to radical. So 16 to the 1 half, that becomes the square root of 16, right? I could put a two here, I could put a one there, which becomes just the square root of 16, which we know is four. Crazy, right? 16, rewriting, 16 to the three halves. Again, this becomes the square root of 16 cubed the square root of 16 cubed. Okay, so remember, now we're using this property. So they're giving us x to the m over n, and now I'm just gonna rewrite this as parentheses, the nth root of x, all raised to the n. Now we're finally using this property. 
So that's where this is where it comes in here. This becomes the square root of 16 all raised to the third. That's this exact property right there. And we just saw from earlier, the square root of 16 is four, still raised to the third, and four cubed is 64. All right, 17, last one for all the marbles. First thing to do, use your negative exponent rule. Flip it to a fraction. One over 16 to the three halves. Then you get one over the square root of 16 cubed. Is this looking familiar? Yes, we already did 16 to three halves on the last one, right? 16 to the three halves was what we did in the last one and 16 to the three halves is 64. So we kind of have our answer already, but I'll still walk you through it. Rewriting this, this becomes one over parentheses square root 16 cubed, which becomes one over four cubed, which is one over 64. Done. Those are exponents, my friends. Learn them, love them, know their rules. How many rules were there? A lot, but it's a good thing you get to use your notes. Huh? Okay, that's it. That's exponents. Thank you, guys.